Yes, Mr. Chair, we are ready. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to call to order the uh, July 12, 2021 Special Assessment Commission. Um, tonight, we're going to uh, have the public hearing. Uh, we run it fairly informal, uh, so um, you know everybody will get a chance to speak. Um, I just have a question before we get started. Is everybody here to address uh, District 2250, the Cheyenne Street, or are you here for other projects? Both. Both, sir, you're here for a couple. Everybody else is pretty much here for 2250, then? Okay. Very good, because if you're here for something else, we'll try to move them up earlier, but if we're all here for 2250, that's first thought. Okay, so the next item on the um, agenda is the roll call. Uh, Tina and John, let the minutes show that all uh, the Special Assessment Commission is present, along with the City Attorney and City Engineer. Uh, we'll have a brief overview of how the assessment process in West Fargo works. So. Uh, City Attorney John, would you kind of just inform everybody, give them a brief rundown of how the assessment works here? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And uh, tonight is the public hearing for any objections to the proposed list. And so I'll just backtrack to where we started. Uh, the Commission will recall that we had a number of meetings to go over the information, background, and facts for each of the districts that are on your agenda tonight. Uh, during that time period, it was an open meeting. I believe all the materials are available online for the basis that formed those assessments, along with the meeting minutes. I think there's a recording and video presentation of all the meetings. Um, the lists were developed based upon those meetings uh, with input from uh, the engineer. Uh, I reviewed them, and then the commission uh, approved going forward with publication of those lists. Those lists have been published twice in the official newspaper for the form. Also, letters were sent out to the property owners regarding the assessments. I would note that the letters aren't required by law, uh, but as part of the process a number of years ago, the city added that process into the notice proceedings. Uh, so tonight, uh, the Special Assessment Commission's task is to have a public hearing on each of the assessment districts hear any objections to the special assessments, and then make a decision regarding those objections. The objections do not have to be in writing. They can be oral. Um, they could also be in writing. Uh, we do have a, uh, at least one that was written. So what I would propose is that after, and it's for 2250, after the verbal objections are complete, we would just note that for the record. Uh, I would suggest that the commission would open, ha, start the public hearing, have all the comments, close the public hearing, and then debate it. Um, I don't recommend that after you've closed the public hearing that you take additional comments because we want to create clear bookends for the public hearing. Um, the commission's task is not to look at the overall cost of the project. That's already been decided by the uh, city council. Also, you don't have any control over the contracts or any of those issues. The contracts were already let. They're already paid for. Special Assessments Commission's task is to take uh, the amount that is supposed to be assessed, levy that, apportion it, and levy across all the parcels within the district in accordance with law and the century code and case law. Um, if you, uh, and because of that, if you lower one person's assessment, you can potentially raise other people's assessments. And just for the record, I would note that I'm also a property owner in 2250. I don't, um, along with many other people, I, I'm just so that you're aware of it, just as a full disclosure. Happy to answer any questions that you might have through the process. Um, once you're done tonight, uh, you can, you could either table a district if you felt you needed additional information, and you can, can or you could alter the adjustments, or you can confirm uh, the assessments. If someone's not happy with your decision, they still have additional rights to appeal to the city commission. Um, that has to be done in writing, so they would need to submit their written appeal and then show up at the public hearing for the city commission. Um, if they're not happy with the city commission's decision, they can still appeal that to a district court. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, then uh, what we'll do is we'll have the city engineer on every district just start out with an overview of the district, uh, overview of the assessments, and then we'll open it up for public comment. So Dustin, let's start with District 2250. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman Brownlee and uh, members of the Commission. So I'm going to scroll down here on, on the screen. You can see we've got our agenda packet. It is also available online. Um, I will, for full disclosure, uh, indicate that there was a revised packet uploaded about an hour ago. The only change was an added sentence to this page, which I will certainly point out here as I uh, go through this. So, um, well, as uh, our attorney indicated, you know, we had a meeting back on May 24th to review the project. The um, uh, preliminary list was also reviewed and uh, approved by the Special Assessment Commission. Um, just a, a, as a brief courtesy for those attending, you know, Cheyenne Street was our reconstruction project that took place in uh, 2018 to 2020 uh, from Beaton Drive down to 40th Avenue. It was a full urbanized um, expansion of, of Cheyenne Street. So um, I don't need to spend a whole lot of time, I think, describing the project. I'm pretty sure that everyone's familiar with it. But uh, certainly if there are more detailed questions on um, construction components, I can certainly answer those as those questions come. So um, as we discussed on May 24th, this being an arterial roadway, uh, the policy that was adopted in 2016 uh, was our starting point uh, in terms of putting together the basis for allocating out the assessments. Our policy refers to uh, or suggests that an arterial roadway be assessed on what's called an equivalent unit basis. If the commission recalls an equivalent unit uh, for the most part, it is equal to 10,000 square feet. However, on a regional arterial roadway project like this, for residential properties, uh, regardless of size, up to two acres, if it's a platted residential single-family lot under two acres, they're going to get one equivalent unit. And so you might have some residential properties that are over 10,000 square feet or under, but everyone's going to get one unit up to two acres. For platted residential properties that are over two acres, they get one equivalent unit for the first two acres and then another unit per acre after that. So for example, a 10 acre residential platted property is going to get nine equivalent units. Otherwise, the, um, really the, the equivalent unit then shakes out. Um, like I said, it's essentially equivalent to 10,000 square feet. So if it's a, a commercial property that's one acre, it's going to work out to be about four and a half equivalent units for that acre. So that is the basis of how the assessments are being allocated. Um, also just to refresh uh, the Commission's memory on the, I just want to cover the financial summary here. If you can see in the bottom of the screen, the total project cost was a little over, or over $69 million. Of that, uh, 32270000 is what is uh, being levied out at, in the assessments. The assessment district is all properties south of I-94. And so um, we are basically spreading this $32.27 million over all properties south of I-94 on an equipment unit basis. So again, that's just kind of a, a really quick brief recap of what uh, was reviewed and discussed at the May 24th meeting. Uh, like our attorney mentioned, all of that information is available online if, if the, you know, anyone wants to go see the, the list, the assessment list that was reviewed, the, the maps and all the attachments. If you recall, we had benefit methodology maps and all that good stuff is certainly still available online if, if there are certainly more um, detailed questions that need to be answered. So, so the, again, uh, the new information now, uh, since our last meeting, there, there have been uh, a few changes or revisions made that uh, some issues that were caught after that particular meeting. And I'm going to go through that. You can see here the one, two, three um, are modifications to that list that was reviewed at the May 24th meeting. Number one, there were six parcels that we had to reduce from two equivalent units down to one because we found that they were under two acres. And so like I 
mentioned earlier, all single family residential properties under two acres are going to get one unit. That was just a mistake um, when, when the list was put together. And there is a map here uh, showing where these are located. There's a couple properties that were in the Brooks Harbor development. So this is the uh, Cheyenne River diversion channel here. So two properties there, and then there are, were a few or four properties here in Eagle Run, just on the east side of 9th Street West. So again, um, those six parcels were modified so that they were getting the one equivalent unit as our policy requires. Uh, change number two was for a common space. If, if um, you recall, we did have some discussion during the May 24th meeting when there is a, a condo development or a townhome development, some of those things that use a common space. A common space might be like a, a common dry aisle. Um, that property itself, the parcel itself of that common space is, is a non-taxable property. Most of them are flagged within our system and they're naturally caught. This one slipped through the cracks. It was getting a $40,000 assessment. So what we did is we redistributed that $40,000 assessment over the parcels that are adjacent to that common space. And again, I have a map that shows exactly where that's at. The corner of 32nd Avenue and Cheyenne Street here, there's the uh, gas station. Uh, just to the north is the, the new lights development. So this parcel here that's in this red dash boundary, that is a parcel that the city does not tax. It's really the internal drive lane network. That $40,000, like I said, then is redistributed over the adjacent properties that use that common space. Again, this is typical in several other areas throughout this particular district, and we just wanted to be consistent. And again, it just it wasn't caught when that preliminary list was, was reviewed on May 24th. The third revision since our last meeting is due to the, a recent property split. And a property split, um, you know, sometimes it's due to a sale or there's a, a change in, in the boundary. And um, at any rate, what, what ends up happening is an existing parcel is deleted and a new parcel takes its place sort of thing. And because of the timing of that, when we put together the list that was presented on May 24th, there was a parcel not included that really should have been. And I'm going to just get right to the map. It's easier to understand what we're talking about. This particular parcel is located just on the south side of 40th Avenue. And you can see, so this is the, the map that was presented at the May 24th meeting. You can see here it was it was blank. Again, just something that we didn't catch before we went to that, to that meeting. The properties to the south, as well as the properties to the north, are being assessed. And so the intent of, that, of this district, really, that parcel should have received an assessment. And so, again, we did change that. We brought that parcel into the list and um, levied the assessments onto that par parcel just in, in the same equivalent unit manner as, as the other parcels within the district. So all three changes combined resulted in the equivalent unit price for this project decreasing from $3,379.66, again as presented on May 24th, down to $3,370.13. All of those revisions were made prior to advertising the list that we are um, here today to, to uh, listen to any objections to. And all of the letters that were sent, again, reflected these changes. So, uh, but again, I wanted to start by pointing out those are the three things that have changed since the May 24th meeting. We, we have not changed the methodology that was approved. Again, equivalent unit basis. So, um, Otherwise, uh, the remaining stuff here in this packet, for the most part, um, the background and project summary, this is the exact same information that was provided to you uh, at the May 24th meeting. Again, it's available online. You know, it goes through the, a little bit of the history of the project. Um, so I'm just going to scroll past that. I've already went through the uh, three maps here showing the revisions. 
The next thing I wanted to point out to the Assessment Commission here is a sample of the letters that were sent to all property owners. Um, this, of course, has been redacted to take off any personal information, but as you can see here, it uh, provides the property owner with not only uh, some information on the process, the notification about tonight's meeting, um, but also this blacked out area here is indicating what their proposed assessment is. And attached to the letter was a map of the improvement district, which again are all properties south of I-94. Then the next 200 and some pages is the list that was advertised. Uh, one, the legal publication went into the form, I believe, June, the week of June 23rd and the week of June 30th. Um, this is that list that was published. And then, let's see, towards the end, in this packet, which again, this packet will be made available online. The last sheet here for this particular item is a revised uh, map that just shows um, at the snapshot view the assessments based on the current list. So, And that's where you can see now changes, things like this parcel that was added, you can see here, is, is in there. So I apologize, that keeps jumping back. Um, you can see in here now that common space lot that I mentioned, the $40,000 that was redistributed, that is now whited out, that's not receiving an assessment. So again, that is all the new information on this item I have. Um, I think I'd start with answering any questions the Assessment Commission would have. Okay. Uh, before I open the public meeting, Commissioners, any questions that you have with us? <coughs> Yeah, I've got a, I've got a few. Um, so I know back when we met in May, um, I had asked uh, kind of about the assessment district and why it's all of, you know, West Fargo south of the interstate. Can you um, kind of explain why it was set up that way for um, everybody that maybe wasn't here in May? Sure. No, great question. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Um, a while back, I want to say around 2014, when we were planning the 40th Avenue and 32nd Avenue uh, reconstruction projects, there was an idea that to um, uh, move away from a, an old policy where we were assessing an arterial road one mile each way would have been the was more commonly the district, and to move towards a larger area uh, because we were anticipating um, several reconstruction projects, not just 32nd and 40th Avenue East, but 32nd and 40th Avenue West, and of course Cheyenne Street. So uh, back then there was some discussion with the current, or the Assessment Commission at that time with um, the idea of creating a district that in, uh, in includes all properties south of the interstate. Um, John can talk to this a little better than I can, but the state law does not allow us to create a special assessment district citywide. Um, but we can create a boundary, in this case, as large as all parts of South of 94. So um, we administered or we financed districts 2233 and 2239 in a district the exact same boundary as, as what we have here for 2250. So we're um, being consistent with the, the last couple of districts that we've done. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have one more uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if I... I uh, got a good look at it there at the map. Um, there's a note of some uh, city property that wasn't being assessed. I know in the past city property has been assessed. I'm just wondering why uh, city property is not being assessed in this district or in this assessment. Sure. Um, so I know that there are a number of properties the city owns, and I'd say predominantly those are going to be retention ponds. And so if uh, retention pond lots and, and some other non-buildable type lots, we don't 
levy an assessment on those. We don't collect the tax on those, and regardless of whether the city owns them or um, there are some other ones, you know, an HOA lot that might not receive an assessment. So um, if there's a specific property that didn't get an assessment that you want to ask, I, I could answer. I know that there are some city-owned properties, certainly, that um, are receiving an assessment. I can maybe point out a, a couple of them. Uh, for example, I want to say, let's see, I want to say there's this blue one here might be a city parcel, 23,006. I'd have to confirm this, but I, so generally, um, if it's a retention pond, like, like here, this whited out lot, this is a, a retention pond, it just mm -hmm. don't let me an assessment. So I guess to be more specific with an answer, I need to know what okay. specific um, If you scroll down to 40th and Cheyenne there, so Dustin, there's also the uh, Cheyenne Plaza lot, too. They're owned by the city. They're getting assessed. Okay. Yeah, so well, there's properties in this, within the, the Cheyenne Plaza there, or okay. Cheyenne Plaza, or the lights at the... The lights. The lights, lights. yep, the lights. There's West Fargo owned properties that are receiving assessments. Okay. Um, yeah, so I saw, I was, I was kind of playing around uh, the other night and saw that uh, some of the properties here on the southwest corner of 40th and Cheyenne, those are city lots, the one on the north, to the north there, it's a water tower. Oh. Um, I'd seen that some of those properties uh, have had some assessments in the past, so I'm just wondering kind of what, you know, what's the difference between past project versus this project, why are they being assessed in the past, not now, et cetera. So. I know there have been some replats in this area. I, I, I know that the two larger parcels here are, again, part of a retention pond system. Um, the one up here is the water tower and the recycling facility. There's also a, uh, yep, that one, yeah, it, it, you know, that's a, it's a good question, I guess. Um, part of it is, it, the, the engineering behind it is we take a parcel list from a, a data source and if it's marked as non-taxable or, or not accessible, um, that's how the spreadsheet will, will go through. So uh, we don't go through uh, the 6,000 parcels each, each one at a time and we, we try to fine tooth comb as much as we can, but this one I, I guess I, I'd have to defer that question to. Yeah, I would say that the, we'll have to go back and check to see how that property has been platted, but if the water tower is on a separate lot, we'd probably want to include that in the assessment district. I think we caught most of them for the city owned, but we'll, we can go back and check that one in particular. Yep, yep, absolutely. Are there any other parcels that are city owned that you'd want to ask about or? <laughs> I didn't go through all, all 6,000 properties myself. Right, and that's no, right. Yeah, no, yep. I understand, you know, I deal with data all the time, so I, I understand how cumbersome that can be. So um, yeah, those are just some uh, some examples that I had, uh, I, that had been mentioned uh, to me that I was curious about, so. Yep, well, I certainly appreciate the, the questions and yeah. um, I guess at this point, if there's any action taken, there can certainly be the um, conditional, it can be conditional based on making a change with this particular property, so. Okay, thank you. Good catch, by the way. Okay, with that, I'll open the public hearing on uh, 2250. And again, I want everybody to have a chance to speak, but as our city attorney said, you know, and I'll give everybody plenty of time, but once we close the public hearing, I mean, that, that's gonna be it. Um, we won't take any more comments, so please, Make sure you get up here to get your comments in because we want them all in the record. We want everybody to get a chance to speak. Uh, so with that, um, whoever wants to come up first, if you just give your name and address when you address us and uh, bring forth your concerns. Good evening, com commissioners. My name is Keith Weston. I'm a board manager for Southeast Cass Water Resource District and we'll be speaking about parcel 02 three zero 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 one two four zero zero one two that particular parcel is on the west side of the uh, diversion project it's currently being used by us for spoilage of excess dirt or sediment when we're doing maintenance on the uh, horse 
West Fargo diversion. And uh, being a local unit of government recognized by the state, we would ask you to consider not assessing that parcel. I know we were here last year and had similar conversation and I believe you, you did drop the assessment on, on the property that's owned by the Southeast Gas Water Resource District. Okay, I remember that we did that. Um, and right now with the amount of fill that's on there, it's really not a developable lot and we're continuing, in fact, we're just working on cleaning out an area right beside that uh, area. So we'll be putting some of that spoil in that area again. So okay. if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but would like your due consideration to, to drop that special assessment. Um, Dustin, do you remember on the last district that they were included, did we, did we drop that off? I believe for District 2239, if that's the district we're referring to, I believe yep. that we did let in assessment on that parcel. But I'd, I'd have to check it. You know, between 2233, which was 32nd and 40th Avenue East, and then 2239, which were 40th, 40th and 32nd Avenue West, my recollection is that both districts let in assessment on that, on that parcel, and just like the parcels. So this parcel, by the way, is located to the one that we just added. It's, it's located right south of that. Okay. So, um, I guess we should approach your, uh, sure. yep. apologies, yep. excuse nope. me. Nope. Uh, uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, so a couple points to make, and maybe John will have to step in a little bit too, but uh, one thing we don't do when we are allocating assessments, we don't get into the use of every individual property because, as we know, uses can change. So things like, um, you know, a, a property that's maybe undeveloped, uh, we do have some things in place to try to have a reduction, but if it's, you know, a warehouse today, we don't, we don't levy a special assessment based on it being a warehouse today uh, because it could turn into a, you know, multiple family dwelling in the following year, you know. So we don't assess on based on how it's being used today. Um, and then just to show again where this is located, the uh, parcel is being, so this is, it's this parcel, um, so there's the yellow one right off 40th Avenue, then there's a green highlighted, and the next yellow one is, is Southeast Cass Owens. So just like the properties to the north of 40th and the, the two properties just to the north of this, um, we've levied an assessment here just to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Century Code does specifically say that even public entities such as the city or, or the park district, school district, so on and so forth, um, are accessible properties. So. It's certainly your call on whether or not you want to make an adjustment. I'm just providing the location of where this is at and the reason why it's receiving an assessment. And I don't know if Tina or John have anything to add there, but um, I think that's about all I would have to share on that. So. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Solberg, the assistant administrator, was able to pull this up much quicker than me. Um, the assessments right now for that particular property, the special assessments that are out there were for District 2228, The Wilds, 2182, County Road 17, 2239, which is 32nd and 40th Avenue West on Cheyenne. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then they have this pending one. So they do have special assessments okay. on that property. I can't describe if there are any that didn't go on. And just from a legal perspective, uh, the city is uh, permitted to assess other political subdivisions. The only subdivision you can't assess is the federal government. Okay. You can assess state property, but you can't assess, like, the post office owns its property. You can't levy a special assessment against it. Okay. Thank you. I guess, you know, I, I would hope that you would look at it the same way you did last year. The reality is if you assess us, we're going to turn around and assess the other folks that are part of the project. So that will 
unfortunately happen. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Jeannie Lai, and uh, my property is located at 1317 27th Avenue West. I wonder, I, I'm not so sure if I made a mistake or I'm missing something because I tried to read this map, but I do not see my property in this area. So I wonder is my Huh? 1317 27th Avenue West. I, I tried to read this map several, several times, but I really do not see my property listed in this area, in this map showing. So can we check or? Do you have the letter that? Yeah, you, I have you, the letter. Does it have a parcel number on the letter? And uh, it will make it easier to find. No, I yeah, don't I see my, oh, there is a parcel number, so, yeah, and because based on the map, I did not see that, but maybe for the parcel number. So, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Okay. This is 26th Avenue. Here's a roundabout. Yeah. 26th Avenue, there is a park right here. Okay. So 27th Avenue would be right down here, 13th Street would be between I believe this is 12th and this is 14th, or is this I yeah, close on that? So, um, so that area also includes? Yep, this is included with every, every parcel south of I-94 within the city limits are included. And so uh, maybe just to zoom out and give you the full scale, on the very top part of this map is the interstate. Mm -hmm. it, it's this little sliver of gray up here. Um, it's easier that we did have to, because of making this readable, we put a little inset here, but um, so again, I-94 here is the north boundary of, of this mm -hmm. assessment district, which yeah. I'm going to go to the, to the map, and I apologize, that the, you know, the map, when we went to mass printing, we did print a black and white map to save money, but um, I know that makes it a little harder to read, too. Yeah. So. Um, again, here's the interstate system. All parcels within the yellow shade here are included in this district. So I wonder, in the back of my uh, in the back of my property, there is a pond. So I think that it will easy to recognize. So can you show us, show me where is that pond? Absolutely. Maybe I'm going to probably go back to that other map. Yeah. This white okay. parcel here is okay. a pond, so I'm... So this is the boundary for the assessment that shines three and the okay. Yep. And so, and, and being a single family residential property, yeah. you're being, so all of these blue properties are receiving the same assessment, the, the 3,370, or $3,370. And uh, is any possible I can we can see how this number coming out, or it is in the online information. Sure, uh, there is a link mm -hmm. provided in the letter, and there's also a link provided in this agenda here, which I could click on, I believe. So I'm going to click on that link. Okay. And now here are individual project information. So scrolling down. Um, it's, it's under, if you go to the city, the West Fargo website, okay. it's, it's under, okay. yep. so and there are a number of attachments that you can take a look at in okay. here, yeah. certainly. I can read that, but thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you both. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Hi, my name is Tom Bombersbach. <clears throat> my wife and I, Sandy, have lived in south of the interstate now for 25 years. We were next 
by West Fargo. So we have larger lots out there. Um, mine is a, ours is a two acre lot. And when we got home and got this letter from the city stating, uh, I want to question Mr. Scott again. Um, you said up to two acres is going to be one parcel, one unit? Yep, the caveat there is that it has to be a platted parcel. So if it's okay, a that's, the, that's the issue. I get a, we get a bill for $23,000 you're assessing us. And you annexed us. Why wasn't that platted at that point 25 years ago? So my neighbor, my neighbor across the street and the neighbor to the north of me, all of us have two acre lots or less. And we're all, he one got 16,000, one got 9,000, and we got 23,000. Does that sound fair to you? You just told us it was supposed to be uh, 3370 for a unit. And it's not my fault that it's not platted. You annexed us. So that's why I'm contesting this. Could, um, could Dustin uh, enlarge the area that we're talking about for the commission? It's always easier to see a picture of where, what you're talking about. So on the map here, here is 36th Avenue, just on the north side of Liberty Middle School. 36th Avenue going west, hits a roundabout to the west of that. There is, uh, there are existing homesteads that were uh, annexed. And, and again, um, just to, to explain this, uh, this policy, if you will, when the city commission adopted the policy back in 2016, um, they wrote in there, so, so maybe I should back up. Prior to 2016, there wasn't this rule of thumb of one equivalent unit per two acres and, and, and another unit after two acres. Before that, it was basically one equivalent unit was 10,000 square feet, regardless of whether or not you were platted, residential, so on and so forth. Um, in 2016, that policy came out and to try to, uh, and this was on the heels of the 52nd Avenue project where there were a number of concerns with the five to six acre, acre par parcels um, and other larger parcels that were already not only uh, platted but developed and, and so on and so forth. The city commission and this, uh, with the recommendation of the special assessment commission made a policy to say all platted developed parcels will get this I guess uh, this uh, formula applied. So to satisfy the condition, you have to be not only platted, but again, be a single family residential lot. So when you write that type of uh, equation into the spreadsheet, again, it spits it out. It, the, the parcel data that we get knows if a parcel is unplatted or not, right? And so there's just a, a formula that's being applied per the policy, and again, uh, there are some of these lots like this that this is exactly why we're here tonight, to understand what the objection is and to, to make a judgment call on whether or not the Special Assessment Commission wants to, to alter the list accordingly. But again, it is based on the policy. Um, members of the Special Assessment Commission, I was just talking with the city administrator and uh, Dustin is correct with respect to the policy of unplatted lots uh, getting the assessment uh, as we've calculated it. Uh, the last time this came up, because these parcels, uh, uh, the chair will remember that we made a, a deal, I believe this is South River State, um, where we agreed that if on the condition that they would plat their property uh, going forward, we would treat their property as if it were platted, but they would have the condition of getting the property platted within a year. Um, we could certainly follow that same policy. What does it happen? Well, so platting requires the owner to initiate the platting process. The city can't force somebody to plat. So 
you annexed us. We was we didn't want to be into West Fargo. You annexed us, so, show, so shouldn't all the legality be on your side to make sure it's right so there, before there's a, you annex us? So I, I don't know when you uh, were in your property and weren't, but there was a annexation a, a deal that was approved in 2005, uh, and I believe uh, it was approved by an administrative law judge that required the property would come into the city uh, last year in 2020. So there's 15 years that the property w went without getting especially assessed for any of the city pro projects. That was that was two farmers down there. We were not involved okay. with that. Okay. That was two farmers that the city struck a deal with. Okay. Nothing to do with us. Okay. Well, did you just get assessed this year, or we were and we've been assessed for everything okay. the city has done. All right. So now we're now they really put the hammer down. Well. So plotting, it, plotting is different than the annexation process. Annexation is just bringing property as a group into the city. The plotting process is a, a process where each property owner signs off on a plat. Um, it sets forth the right of way, it sets forth the plat dimensions. It's a pretty straightforward process and we walk the last subdivision that this happened to through the process. And so what, uh, what we did the last time was uh, we made the recommendation that each of the parcels be treated as if they're under the policy on the condition that those property owners went forward with plotting their property within a year. I would be happy to do that if I knew that was the policy. Well, if, I mean, it, it's up to the Special you know, Assessment Commission. I can't, would, I can't make that. Everyone would be happy to do that if we knew that was the policy. Well, and but that's what you work out between yourselves. We don't know. Well, yeah, no. there, yeah, and it's, it's not. Uh, so just to be clear, uh, the city administrator reminded me it's not a policy. It was a workaround uh, out of uh, equity and fairness that the uh, Special Assessment Commission and the city felt that it was the most appropriate way to treat those property owners to remedy those situations like yours. Just okay. what There's a handful of us out there. Right. When you made, when you made this decision, you must have known that we were there. Why wasn't someone notified that, to ask us, would you like to get into this with the, with the rest of the city so this can happen again and again and again? You know, this isn't right. I have a $2 million home across the street from me. He's paying 30, $33.70. And that's why this process is geared the way it is. We have a, we set the notices out. We have a public hearing. And once in a while, there are parcels that have unique circumstances, and this is the process where you come before the Special Assessment Commission. That's why, that's why we're here. Right. And, they'll, and only the Special Assessment Commission can make the decision. I can just provide recommendations. Right. I don't know, but I'm just trying to voice my opinion. That's all. I'm just trying to be fair here. You know, like, like didn't you, Mr. Scott, didn't you say you made, and you got three decisions you made just recently, and three of them were six acre lots or something that you changed so they could get in on it? Yeah, but that was a, so those were platted single family properties that were being treated as if they were unplatted. And so we corrected the original list to follow again the policy and, and make sure that if they are platted, if they are under two acres, they should have had the one based on the policy. Yeah, and that, but I, I guess that what I don't understand is why we were never, you know, they next us and they never asked us to be platted? What? This doesn't make sense. Why aren't we all the same? If we're all West Fargo, why aren't we all the, why aren't we all the same out there? Or everywhere? Normally the city doesn't knock on people's doors asking them if they want to plot their property. It's just, it's not, plotting a property is driven by the property owner. Is what? It's driven by the property owner. The property owner has well, Yeah, when you're building a new home and that, yes, that's part of the, that's part of the book, the pamphlet you put together. But we were already there. So nobody come, came around to talk to us. The only time we see someone is when we want another special assessment levied on us. I, I understand your frustration, and I guess from my view, I, I would be comfortable making the same recommendation that we did the last time to deal with parcels like this with the same uh, carve-out, but ultimately it's the Special Assessment Commission's decision. Well, that's where I'm at. Okay. Given what the city attorney said, would you be agreeable to that condition? To have our property platted? Yep. Well, for sure. If, I had, if somebody would have asked us before, we would have done that. You know, why wouldn't we? If we're going to be part of the city, mm -hmm. I don't know what it costs. But 
it, no, yeah, yeah we, we, no. if you give your information to the city engineer, you can get in contact to, with you about the process and the, there is some cost to you, but I think the last uh, development that went through it, it was less than if you were getting assessed under the policy. So it was much cheaper to go forward with getting the property platted and in addition, in the future, if there's ever any assessments, then you treat it as a platted property under the policy. Right. That's all we're asking, Mr. Farrell. Now, Ms. Palmer's Mark, to be clear, there's an awful lot of unplatted properties, you know, that aren't two acres, you know, so we can't make a policy decision and just say, you know, we have to kind of research this and look a little closer and, you know, make sure it just addresses those particular parcels that, and I don't know how many they are, without having dust and look at that. Commissioners, I mean, like I said, there might be some so, other unplanted parcels for various reasons. I mean, this is a huge district that also would fall in. So again, as a commission, we, we make a policy change. We have to make sure we treat everybody the same in that policy. And that's why you guys got clipped with a big one, because the policy said you're unplanted and we follow the policy. Uh, so. Um, yeah, and commissioners, what would be? Um, I don't think I would look to make a policy change here. I, I like just, the just to I, address those. I like the offer of uh, him being able to plat that property and take advantage of the lesser cost. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate that very much. Yeah. And just for uh, put a finer point on what the chair said, there are uh, the reasons that we have that policy in place is there are several parcels that are large parcels owned by developers and they're going to go back later and divide that up into you know three houses per acre understand and so that's why we have that in place where there's a um, where we've allowed this exception is where there's an existing subdevel uh, subdivision with actual homes there and it's very unlikely that I, I, in you know in the future somebody could demolish a house but it's unlikely they're going to do a full you know, brand new subdivision a question could we approve the district tonight with that noted in in there? Yeah, you could make that as a recommendation and then staff can take that back and take care of those issues. Because we'll, we'd need to like a, a, just an agreement with uh, your your property and your group that you would agree to be sub, or agree to be platted within a year. So you're saying get in touch with us in here? Correct. Okay. And Bob and Ed, are we agreeable that yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yep. We will make that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, do I say anything to my neighbors, or I tell them to come see you or someone else? I, I would say that your neighbors should also be in. You want to sub. You want to subdivide as a group for a couple reasons. Number one, I'm sure they'll want to take advantage of it too, and number two, it reduces your overall cost of platting because there's oh, more people goodness, involved. Yeah. There are a couple points I'd want to make. Uh, first being that I generally don't deal with uh, facilitating private property being platted, um, but I can certainly point you in, in a couple options. Generally, you're going to hire a consultant to do that. Um, the other point I wanted to make is that for unplatted properties, I just want to remind the Special Assessment Commission that we do reduce the assessable area by 25%. And so if there is a one-acre unplatted property, we really only are assessing three quarters of an acre of it. Um, again, obviously the, that is applied here, but there's still a large number. So being platted is certainly a, a much sig more significant reduction, but I just wanted to refresh uh, the assessment commission's memory that, again, unplatted parcels are reduced by 25%. Um, and the idea there is that if and when they do plat, there are requirements to dedicate land um, most commonly for things like right-of-way, also for park dedication, so on and so forth. And so that 25% reduction for unplatted parcels is because when they do develop, they're going to give that right away up. So, um, but again, just wanted to make that clear. Well, we have, we don't even have a street or a gravel road. And, mm -hmm. So I imagine that would be one of the things, we requirements we would have to give up the right-of-way for street and sewer and absolutely and that's where there'll be some complications but again um, the engineering department generally doesn't facilitate this and I don't know if it'd be more appropriate to get in touch with the planning department um, or if it's to start right with the consultant but maybe maybe this is just 
if you could give Dustin or myself your contact information and we yeah, can, we can coordinate it. Thank you very much. Anyone else who wants to address the commission? Yes, sir. All right, so for the record, my name is Mike Savallison, and my address is 4812 Cheyenne Street. Um, I had a good conversation with Dustin, and he helped a ton. So um, getting the, the unit count and everything, I was going by unit. So I was thinking of like some of the properties we have with you know 98 apartment units in there and trying to figure it out, and I couldn't make stuff add up. But um, ours is, it shows 7.86 acres. Everything adds up. Um, but then I know we sent in a formal complaint for the legality of how you guys have to do everything uh, for us as well as uh, my mother and father-in-law. Um, I can't make theirs add up to the formulation that he has, um, and their address is 1225 32nd Avenue West in West Fargo. So they have 12.31 acres, and they were assessed $158,396. Um, if I, if, I guess, I've never been a math major by any means, but I just recalculated it again, and using that formula, it should be closer to $43,900. Uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out the difference. <clears throat> sure. I'm just going to take a guess. I think it's the property here off 32nd Avenue. Yep, right next to Rendezvous. Yep, okay. Um, I believe... So it, it's this property right here, yep. right next to it. I believe that's unplatted. So okay. again, just like that discussion. Just do the same thing. It'd be, um, yep, and that's a conversation I've had with the property owner in yep. the past. Yep, I know he had, he had said that you guys had that conversation. I just wanted to make sure it was formal. So we, um, so that's the one thing, and I know they're still working on trying to figure out getting sewer there. Do you know if they've figured that out? Uh, yeah, that, and that's a whole separate situation, uh, whether or not getting sewer there doesn't have to prohibit somebody from platting. So if they want to plat um, or subdivide, they can do that. If they want to get uh, infrastructure extended over, that's part of a different conversation. And, um, yeah, because that's, I think, you know, like they said, they paid for city sewer and water now with the project and haven't received it yet. Well, they, yeah. they were assessed in the past for the 32nd Avenue and 40th Avenue projects. Uh, they were assessed for um, past street projects. There has not been a local sewer water project done in that area that they paid for. Okay. So I know when I talked to the owner there before, the concern was there's water and sewer, of course, under 32nd Avenue. Yep, but they didn't get it out of the street. The, all the residential properties that you see basically in blue and all the streets with it, our local sewer, water, storm lines, and streets that were paid by those residents, and that gets the sewer water up to into the property, right? That so that the house can go in and connect onto it. That's what they don't have yet, and that's what at some point if they want that, will extend <coughs> that infrastructure there. That will certainly cost money. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's just kind of. I think they're frustrated that you guys did the road but didn't finish the job. You know, and they're getting assessed, like you said, at the same rate as everyone else, actually higher. <laughs> they're getting assessed for the street at, at the same rate as other non-platted yep. properties. Right. But so, I mean, is that something they should have helped you guys engineer it to make sure that it had sewer and water? So some of that stuff occurred before my time, but my understanding is that they were asked at that time whether or not the city should extend infrastructure into their property and the answer was no, because that would have come with a lot more of assessments. Okay. And so where they did help, they did pay for the street portion, they have not paid for local sewer and water lines, and it would have come with a much higher okay. assessment. Um, and I, my understanding is, and again, I don't want to get into it. Yes, yeah, no, I... My understanding is that, that those meetings took place years ago, and the answer at that time was no, we're not ready to develop. Don't need, we're fine with our well and our septic, so... Yep, and I think... Once they went to city uh, plot, or you know, they were annexed on, then they can't use past rural, so 
Right. You get, had to bring them water. My understanding is the cast line is still there um, feeding them the city's water. Okay. And again, that was also talked with them and it was just that was the cheaper way to do it so that they didn't have to help pay for the lines to get extended. So what we did is converted the existing lines that were there, had them into the city's water, and now they're still basically getting, you're yep. they're getting water and quite honestly at, at a probably a discount rate I'd say. Because okay. they didn't have to help pay for whereas everybody else is paying a front foot cost for their water and sewer lines. They are still using the cash flow water lines that were previously there. Done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just not the sewer. Just yeah. Not the sewer. Okay. Sewers, again. Yeah, the sewers still not there. Um, yeah, and I guess the only other thing is, I know like on this one it was a regional project, obviously with everything south and with us, you know, living south of the project um, between 52nd and 40th, I guess our only worry is, is that going to be a regional project as well or is that going to switch, you know, kind of switching back and forth? somewhat worries us because we're paying for a project north of us now and then when we do the project down by us people north that already just got nailed with assessments are going to get nailed again and they're going to be like why are we having to pay for this right. so I guess that's kind of the thing that I'm not saying I want an assurance but I would I would be upset if if it switched Again, as John said right away, you know, assessment district boundaries aren't set by this commission. Yeah. They're set by the city commission. And so we can address, yeah. you know, future projects. Uh, I don't know who can, but, you know, future projects and how they're going to be assessed and what the districts are going to be and the costs aren't. Yeah. We, we have no control over that. That's the city commission. So um, even if we could, we can't. Yeah. No. We have absolutely no input into that at all. Sir. Okay. Um, and and I kind of missed this at the beginning when Dustin talked about it. So the commercial and like multifamily is all getting assessed at the same rate as residential per unit stuff. Is that right? It's uh, according to the policy. It's all based on. It's the the one equivalent of the unit being set equal to um, the ten thousand square feet. So again. We generally don't look at the use of a property, so there could be a, a, a cold storage warehouse sitting on an acre versus a 10-story building today sitting on an acre. We're generally not, for a special assessment, we don't look at the use, you know, that's what property taxes do and, and so on and so forth. But, um, so again, a, a, a equivalent unit being equal to 10,000 square feet, that's going to be roughly four and a half units then per acre. And so when we get to determining the total cost and the total number of units within a district. In this case, it ends up being $3,300 a unit. And so, again, uh, uh, any other property that is not a single family is going to get four and a half units per acre. Yep. Per acre so. Yeah, and that's the thing that doesn't necessarily make sense in my head when, you know, there's two acres and 500 people living in it and commercial that are using more sewer, more water. You know, we're having to add multiple lanes of the road for that doesn't really seem to, and, and I get it where, you, like you said, that you guys aren't in the business of doing that, but it just doesn't seem logical. Again, as Justin pointed out, you know, we really can't look at the use of the property as a basis of allocation. You know, we usually use equivalent units or square footage or linear footage. But the trouble with getting into usage of a building, you take a church, well, they have a ton of cars on Sunday, but they don't use it the rest of the week. Yep. How would you allocate that? Yep. You know, you can't. So going by usage would be very, very hard to come up with a fair allocation. And that's why just about every municipality uses the same methods that are in our policy, where you're dividing it by a square footage basis or a, a linear footage basis or an equivalent unit basis, because uh, we just don't have any other real equitable means of allocating costs. Yep. So that's the ones that are in our policy. Yep. Yeah, and I think, like we talked about too, you know, adding extra sales tax money that's brought in from those properties, I guess, would show some good faith as well. And I know you said there was like $5 million on this project that that was. So I think that's important that you guys kind of show that, that, hey, these properties, yes, they're getting special assessed less, but we're trying to bring more, you know, a higher percentage 
of those dollars instead of the assessments that private properties are paying. So, okay, perfect. So we, what do we have to do then for the to get it plotted, or do you guys? We'll get it plotted, but um, uh, you need plotting a record is, of some I sort. I believe, as a city, would probably be a yeah, assistance to you. That, okay. that parcel it will probably be in. So that's a bigger parcel than because you could theoretically have more homes on it than just one, um, yep. if it's a correct parcel. And so, um, I'm not sure if you're planning on developing it or uh, we would have. I don't know what the policy for platted lots that is bigger than two acres. Do you remember off the top of your? Well, the policy just basically said that for undeveloped, unplatted, single-family residential parcels. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the budget says for all platted and developed single-family parcels, we'll receive one equivalent unit up to two acres, and each acre after that is one equivalent unit. It doesn't address this sort of situation now here where you've got 13 to 14 acres. Uh, technically, someone, yes, now they could walk in, just like Mr. Mauersbach, become platted, find the loophole in the system, get the reduction in the assessment here, and a year later decide that a developer is interested in subdividing this into four <coughs> unit, you know, four houses per acre, so if all of a sudden we're looking at 60 plus homes out here <coughs> that should have all, you know, so th there'd be a dramatic difference between a 60 unit assessment versus if they, if they technically plot 13 acres, that would be a 12 unit assessment. And that's where we, we did it for the South River Estate neighborhood, um, but predominantly those were, uh, I want to say, roughly an average size of an acre, maybe to two. Um, so the likelihood of seven properties that have homes on them that are in an established neighborhood, really, to redevelop that, tear all those down and put 20 homes out there is very small chance, and that's why there was a, you know, that's why the Special Assessment Commission agreed to, to the one-year condition. This situation is, to me, a little different. Albeit it is a single-family use today, that 13 acres has potential to, to subdivide into something a lot more dense. Right. I believe our, our agreement with Mr. Palmer's Bank was limited just to those several properties. It didn't, based on my understanding, it, it didn't right. extend to any others. I mean, because otherwise, the assessments would go on forever because anybody who has an unplatted lot could come in, plat it, and say, well, I want an adjustment to my assessments. We can't do that. We can't hold the assessments that long. I mean, Yeah, well, so we could get it done right away. That's, the well, time isn't that. The, the, the issue that I think there's a distinction between this parcel and the other parcels, and the city engineer hit it on the head, is that you have a existing neighborhood that's unplatted. Right. And these were two acre lots that these gentlemen have. Yours is considerably larger than that. I mean, so on your planning, it's not going to stay a single family home, I would assume. Well, not, not, they've been not, living not, there for... My business. But yeah. again, I think... Well, I mean, that's essentially what you're saying is you're saying we're going to develop those it. Those two parcels that we were looking at. Well, the, and, and, it, and you just said that there's not the utilities, so we would have to pay to bring them in there. So if we did develop it, we'd have to pay for it. So I also want to point out, so um, Mike here lives at this residence mm -hmm. just south of 47th Avenue. That one is, I, if I remember right, eight to nine acres now? Yep. Eight, yeah, almost and nine. they recently did plat it, and they built a single-family home on it a year or two ago, yep. right? This year. Um, that one is following the policy. What the policy doesn't address is how big of an unplatted lot would we entertain becoming platted and, and thereby receiving the, the two-acre deal, if you will. Um, and that's where so that what Mike is getting at is, okay, they're getting, the, they're getting the policy applied to these eight to ten acre lots. Here's one that's, and I, again, I forget, I but it's 13 to 14 acres. It's a single family home that's been there for, I don't know, Since then, yeah, I mean, for my time, but that's where, to me, I, I, I don't, I mean, 
where do you draw the line is is five acres. I mean, a five acre parcel, you can certainly subdivide. The difference with the, the agreement we made last year with the, the neighborhood is that I'm going to navigate to it right here. You see my cursor. This was an established neighborhood that was annexed in, um, but again, it was, they were unplatted parcels, and so the likelihood of redevelopment here into something more dense, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible, but it is lower. Um, no different than the five to six acre lots here in this neighborhood, which is really why the policy was developed in 2016 anyway. But again, it's certainly possible for these properties to subdivide their five to six acres. And as to me, as you get, the larger you get, the, the more chances there are of subdivision. But in terms of it, creating and administrating a policy, I don't, there isn't, my point I guess has been that there isn't a threshold by which you shall be. And the, we're, what we're, I think what Dustin's getting to is we're really talking about an exception to the policy. Um, with the established neighborhood, that was an exception to the policy. Um, so it's really up to the assessment commission if you want to make the exception. Exception should be based upon facts, very fact specific to the parcels that can be justified, like the existing neighborhood, those sorts of issues where it's unlikely that they would be replatted in the future to a development. Um, like Nelson Acres is a great example. Yes, they have big parcels, but they have you know, they've purposely bought those houses so they can have larger parcels. It's unlikely that they would uh, develop. So, you know, now that they're platted, we follow it. But I, you have to be careful when you use an exception to a policy. And I think the weird part is, you know, there's eight apartment buildings sitting on this parcel, and they're getting it at the same rate as two people living in a house with a shop. You know, and to go through a replotting and rezoning and stuff like that is every, you know, anyone can have an opinion and stop it. So I don't, you know, you guys say that it can get developed. If I tomorrow tried to pull a permit to develop it, it doesn't work that way. You know, and, and like he said, we would have to pull utilities, which cost money. It'd be more than, than the difference. But I guess that's where I don't understand, you know, the what if mentality of, you know, charging on the front side for the possibility of developing. Because when you develop it, you would have to pay to have it done. It's not like instantly you guys would bring the utilities in for free. Right, but that's where all the other properties, you know, the, the blue properties that you're seeing here, they also paid for their sewer and water to be extended yep. into their, their properties. And so and what we're talking about now is the Cheyenne Street District, which, um, again, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, just, it, it's, a, it's not to be commingled with other local improvements that may or may not happen. And I, my, my point there is that if someone were to choose to, to subdivide this and extend infrastructure to it, um, if you get, uh, I don't know, again, 60 lots out of it, what is 160 divided by 60? You know, it, it starts to become, you're going to find that you could you could develop this such that the number of units in there would get the $3,300. And then, yes, you'd have to pay for the local infrastructure just like everybody else. So now it would become very equitable in that the neighborhood over here paid for their local sewer and water plus the $3,300 for Cheyenne. And after redevelopment, this neighborhood would have paid the $3,300 and, and the uh, local sewer and water. Okay. But again, that, that's where, I, yeah. you know, there isn't a threshold at which what house, you know, because I would argue too that a 10 acre parcel along Cheyenne Street could redevelop into, into yeah. multiple I mean, units, but you, you like, just like to do it the comparison I gave to you, it's a, it's a far off one, but when someone goes and buys a gun, yes, they could shoot someone, doesn't mean they're going to. I don't know. Like, like it, we could what if all day long, and it doesn't correlate. You know, um, nice discussion. I mean, but the question before this commission now is, 
you know, we have a policy that we follow. Now we're going to ask you asking us to make an exception as the Debombers Bach to that policy. And I guess our question, do we add this gentleman's parcel to the parcels that we're going to recommend an exception? Did I summarize that up close enough, John? Mm -hmm. When I look at the fairness and I'm comparing to the Mr. Bombers box property, you got equivalent units of, of one to one there when we made the exception. In this situation, if there could be 60 equivalent units on there and there's going to be 12, that, that is not very equitable. You've got five to one ratio there. And so even though it is a what if, that property is developed, if we say yes to that exception, we're saying that you should pay a fifth of the price. That That is my issue. When, when when I look at considering it, I, I look at how fair is it for the rest of the properties in the city of West Fargo and in this assessment district. Again, not to, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I just there are other big properties that are getting the two acre policy yeah, applied. Yeah, we, we have it. Um, <laughs> I just want that full disclosure, and then the other, you know, thing is that even with Mr. Bomber's back area, that there isn't, there is certainly potential to subdivide that area, but um, like I said, their current parcel size is a little over an acre versus this situation. So, mm -hmm. um, and also again, another reminder: unplatted parcel like this did get us a 25% reduction. So, they, if it is a total of 13 acres, we did reduce it 25%. So this number you're seeing, if it were, if we generated the assessment for the full area of it, it would be higher. This, this is based on a 25% reduction. Evan, you have any comments, opinions on it? Uh, I'm struggling a little bit because the properties are different, right, that we're talking about. And so this would be, in my opinion, a different exception mm -hmm. than what Mr. Bomber's block brought up. That said, I mean, I, you know, I don't know that it is fair, you know, to have this. And so I don't know that I would... I don't know that I would feel comfortable doing the, doing what we did with the other exception, but if we can reduce it by a third or half, you know, I would probably, I would be comfortable with that. You know, my problem too is, is the size, and, and no offense here, but you know, you go in, you plant it today as a single lot. Yep. Tomorrow you go in, let's see, six acres, you can plant <clears throat> five, five lots per acre. You know, you have the potential of planting 30 lots today after yep. you get the reduction in the assessments. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of where I'm, I'm struggling it. You know, today you have no plans to develop it. Yep. Nobody in this room knows what you're going to do with it yeah. five years from now. Uh, but the assessments are still going to be there. And again, what we reduce off of yours, somebody else has to pay. Yeah, no, I I think that's that's why doing the assessments like this is a problem where it's, you know, if, if you just charge per project <laughs> to the place, like you do with commercial stuff, hey, I'm building this building, I need a 12-inch line, you write a check for it. Instead of assessing it to everyone else, then you there's not, no behind-the-scenes ideas or whatever. I see what you're saying, but that's extremely inefficient. You know, when you do a main-scale project, then you can divide the costs, and it's a lot cheaper, and you do it all in one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I just, like I said, when we get a letter for hundred almost $60,000 for two people, um, who obviously, you know, they're not going to develop it, and like you said, in the future, who knows what they're going to do with it, but it uh, they would have to bring infrastructure in to do that. So that's, they're going to get charged then. So 
So I don't know, I guess, what you need to figure out, but... Um, Thank you for your input. I yeah. guess we'll have to make a decision on what we want to go with. Is. So in your example, another, t so let's say if we, it already has a 25% reduction. If we did another 25% reduction, what does that do to the dollar amount? Dustin, would that make it, just for example purposes, it's 158 today, correct? Another 25% reduction would make it closer to 100,000? It would be about 120. 120? Right. So about another $40,000 reduction? 45? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to throw out numbers. I'd get myself in trouble if I start getting too exact like that. But yeah, what I would say is the reduction, then the, the amount that was reduced, we would allocate over um, the entire district. Correct. Which would be a relatively small addition, but it would have an impact. And that's, any changes we do today, mm -hmm. of course, are going to reciprocate through the entire district. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I mean, sounds like Commissioner Anderson's math is pretty pretty close with 120 would be another 25% reduction. I just don't want to quote something and get challenged on it later. So I don't want to be quoted on it either. <laughs> Bingo. I mean, uh, that's something I'd be comfortable with. You know, I think if we reduce it too much, you know, it kind of it opens the door for some other things. But so it would be a 25% reduction with the stipulation that they have to plot the property. Yep. Within 12 months? Just stay consistent? Yeah, just stay consistent yeah. with their okay. And And just for the uh, record, it, it's just for this parcel, you're not making an exception to all large parcels. And, and I'm, I think that you could probably justify, justify it on the basis that there's an existing residence in there. Mm -hmm. So you're the additional 25% reduction is for the two and a half acres that the residence sits on, and then the other parcel, part of the parcel could be developed, and then you're applying the 25% reduction to the remaining parcel of the, the reduce. And to me, that, that's probably justifiable. Okay. Yeah. Just to maybe add on that, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of too many other cases like this. Um, but I would say that there is an existing home on this it's south of 52nd Avenue. It's an existing homestead that's been here again for years. Um, they're getting, again, the, the exact same assessment as the property on 32nd Avenue. It's, it's based on the 25% reduction for being unplatted. Um, I, I believe this is roughly a six acre parcel. I, again, I don't know off the top of my head, but that's where, again, the, where is that threshold? Do we do this for any parcel that's greater than five, greater than six? Ten. And I, I can certainly go back and blanket through the district and ask our GIS to maybe query out some of these things, but um, whether or not you want to make the motion very specific to the parcel on 32nd or if you want to include something else or set a threshold, I don't know. We just want to include the parcels yeah. that we're making an exception for these. Now, you, we know the parcels, right? It's Mr. Bomber's box parcels, that gentleman's parcel, and is there one other one? Yeah, I think Mr. there's like three parcels that he was talking about just for that existing development mm -hmm. and this parcel. And I, I, from my view, I would, since you're making an exception, it just should be on a parcel by parcel yep. basis. You should not go back through and adjust the list. It, okay. You're making an exception, so it should be based upon facts presented. Okay. So we're, we're clear. It's three parcels that we're adjusting then? So again, my understanding is that in the in Mr. Mommer's Bach area, there's there's a few here, um, and I, I'm trying to circulate it, circle over them with the cursor. Um, um, Mr. Svalson was speaking on behalf of. I mean, he he owns the property here along Cheyenne Street, which is now platted, and they just built a single-family home. He didn't take issue with that one. I believe he was representing his. Um, uh, father-in-law or a relationship he has with the owner of this parcel 
And so I think the adjustment he was requesting was specific for this one. So there's the, the few in the Bombersbach area, and now there's this one. And again, I just I pointed out another one down here off south of 52nd Avenue, but they're not here or right. and that, that's haven't spoken yet. That's doing anything more than the two that have appeared here, because um, you know we can assume they would agree to a platting, but we don't know that. Right. So we can't make a stipulation, you know, that we're going to reduce them with the stipulation that they got a plat if they're not here to even address that they are interested in platting it. Correct. And it, it could be that they're planning on a large development in a couple of weeks. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why we have the process where they appear. If you're going to make exceptions, it's based upon the facts. My intent was that there's an exception and we're not changing policy today. Right. I'd prefer that. So yeah. I, I think, gentlemen, we've got to do the two parcels that yep. are here. And then Mr. Bombers, Bach, your neighbors will have an opportunity to go to City Commission at a future date if they choose to. So, oh, I'm sorry. We're only going to adjust the parcel, your parcel, not your neighbors, because they're not here to agree to anything. And so we can't really, really deal with that. Uh, they will have an opportunity to go to City Commission if they choose to. Uh, but so on ours, we're just going to deal with the two. Okay. Okay, that was long drawn out, sorry. Uh, anybody else want to speak to the district? Good evening. Good evening. I had a few questions. Um, Sean Halverson with uh, 1023 36th Avenue West. Uh, curious about the, the rule of two acres and then every acre, why not just every acre you know why why go up to two most people have under an acre lot so why do you guys start it at two and work your way up I remember right now and I'm going by memory and Dustin probably got a better memory because he deals with it there was a whole bunch of lots in the city that when they were first developed in two acres uh, I think the first lots in Eagle Run were around that size and so kind of that's Dustin am I correct or am I off you're spot on. I don't know if it was the Eagle Run neighborhood as a much, but the thought process there was again, there is a, a significant difference in the number of parcels that are two acres or higher versus the number of parcels that are one to two acres. There are a substantial number of parcels that are one to two acres. And so. And, and I can add the other we one we went through and looked at the two acre parcels. Most of the homes were situated on the parcels. So it would be very difficult to demolish it. So, I mean, it was unlikely, and I think a lot of the lots are like 1.8 acres, and so we chose two acres as kind of the cutoff yep. for the policy. Okay. So is that just something that continues on going forth in perpetuity then, basically? Yeah, until the uh, city commission were to change the special assessment policy. Okay. And then in regards to the um, boundaries here, uh, it says it goes through Baton, uh, or Beaton, however you pronounce it. Um, it doesn't look like it goes north to 94, so how is it assessed to, uh, you know, Hornbachers and the businesses on Beaton Drive? Oh, uh, so there was actually two components to this district, and I'm going to get the number wrong, but it was 2248? 2244 was the Cheyenne Street project north of I-94 and the Hornbacher's property was assessed. I believe they got a very significant assessment. And then the parcel, then this improvement district covers everything south of I-94 on Cheyenne Street. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Yeah, yeah the technicality there, the project limits for this did end at Beaton Drive. Mm -hmm. So the project limits extend beyond the district boundary. So it, the, the district, so the, the project is described accurately that it is beaten drive down to 40th. It's just it, that the district wasn't that big. Okay. Correct. Okay. Anybody else want to speak to District 22? Good evening. I'm Heidi Wilcox. I represent the uh, ownership group of the Microtel at uh, 705 23rd Avenue East. And uh, we have, uh, you know, been a part of the community for the last four years. Um, we were one of the newest uh, buildings that were built south of 94. 
we have had probably one of the worst years ever, of course, with the pandemic. And um, we've just uh, been informed of the policy of how to review the special assessments. And so that's why I'm here, because at this point in time, uh, we are at over a uh, quarter of a million dollars in special assessments. We are continue to be added upon with the arterial roads that continue to be added to the to the area. Um, at, uh, granted, we understand the Cheyenne um, expansion of the roads. It's, we understand. However, from a commercial side, we're not or do not have access to that side. And it was when you look at our assessment. Um, three times more than what we were assessed even for the 9th Street road system south of 94. South of 94. So, you know, is there an opportunity to think about a maximum of assessments? Because uh, it's going to continue. We're going to see more road systems that need to be expanded because of what's going on in West Fargo. But there's only so much a business such as ours can take. Um, again, to answer your question, is there a maximum? Um, uh, no. And it, it, it's, it's how we allocate assessments. Like I said, it's based on a, uh, a either a equivalent unit or a square foot or a linear foot. That's the three we use almost exclusively. Um, so, again, um, we can't find a way to limit them. Um, without some exceptional reason to make an exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so no, we don't have in our policy right now any maximums or limits on, on that. Um, and, and the policy, you know, that we, we operate under is, um, you know, developed a lot of input and then approved by the city commission. So we, 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 we pretty much have to follow the policy. Well, it's, it's, a, it's difficult, and um, again, by not having access to all of these arterial roads to our property or commercial business, and, and yet they seem to be expanding or being more than what we were originally assessed for what was close to us for the road system. It's, it's to me, it's a little discriminating, um, but again, I'm thinking maybe there's a limit. <laughs> Or as you expand beyond what you have access to, maybe there's another way to assess. So, okay, thank you. I want to be heard. Mm -hmm. May I add something? Yep. Just for the record, again, Keith West and Southeast Cass Water Research District. The land that was in question is valued, I think, at 144,000, and the special assessment 168. So your special assessments were, is going to be more than what the land is valued at, and I'd like you to note that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak to the commission? Okay, one more time. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, I'm closing the public hearing now. So um, we'll bring it back to the assessment commission. What I think we have, gentlemen, is you know to approve the district with those changes. If I would be yeah, and correct. Um, just those two, two exceptions for those properties um, for the. A property that has the, sub, the existing home on it, it would be a reduction to the equivalent unit on the condition that they plot within 12 months. And for the other parcel that appeared, uh, it would be a, a further 25% reduction based upon the fact that they have an existing home out there and uh, that the area outside the existing home has been reduced by 25% for infrastructure and right away that would be there. Okay. And they have to plot within 12 months. Within 12 months, yep. No, we're good. Okay. And then also brought up the uh, water tower or any other city property that can be assessed too. So 
uh, those should be looked at. So. Pardon, I didn't hear that. Oh, so th th those should be addressed as well. So. That's it, I guess I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve with those two exceptions and re-looking at that specific parcel. Okay. I will second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, moving on to District 1321. All right, well, thanks for your uh, patience, and I'm going to try to zoom back out here and get to the next everybody out. item. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We got one more left. Do you want to ask her which one? Uh, Dawson, could I stop you for a minute? Okay. Now, what other district were you here to? Uh, I, I received two assessments. Okay, one is the one. 1322. Another one is 1322. Okay. Dustin, would you have a real objection to doing three instead of two? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. We'll go to thirteen twenty two then, so uh, Oh thank you. overview of the project and hopefully answers your questions. So. Yes. Okay, so... First is I want to know which area, I mean, because showing the Eagle Wood 7 addition, so from where to where, and, the, and the what type of the project we will do, what type of improvement we will have. Okay, so on the map here, you can see on the screen, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So the, the project took place, it, we installed the utilities and we installed the street on 27th Avenue. Um, so maybe the first thing I should be clear of, the, the project is already done. Oh, okay. Yep, so this, these were the improvements made and my guess is that you've recently moved in or now living in here. Yeah. So. Yep, because you're you're along 27th Avenue, correct? Yeah. Yep. So the, the the project was specifically to build the sewer lines, the water lines, the streets uh -huh. in this neighborhood. Okay. Um, so your property here is. How about in the pond area? I mean, in the pond, the city of West Buffalo will be become like the park or something. Yep, so well the, the pond is located right here in the middle. Yes. Yep. So the, the district itself includes other properties, but um, this red shaded area is predominantly where all of the work took place. Uh -huh. And so there was, um, you know, just like the neighborhood to the north of you up here that they, they paid for the sewer, water, and streets, the neighborhood in this red boundary here, or in this red highlighted area, the assessment is for the sewer water streets. So nothing will be done on the pond? The pond was built uh, as a part of this project as well. Okay. Yep. So what will be done on the pond area? Because I can see the trees, I can see, you know, the water, but what, I mean, the pond will become like a park maybe, or, you know, what type of work? Because now the pond is bunched of the weed, and there is a mass of weed, so... Well, the, um, 
maybe I'll stop here, I guess. Okay. The work, all the work that was going to take place is, mm -hmm. is done. The property owners around the pond mm -hmm. own, let's see. so all the properties around the pond own into the water. And so things like the weeds and stuff mm -hmm. becomes the responsibility of each property owner. Mm -hmm. Yep. So your property line goes down into into the water. Oh. So yep. Uh, I mean recently, I don't understand. Is uh, like a landscaping company? They come, they you know, put some grass over there. But what I'm trying to say is my backyard and my pond. And those area now that like, have someone or city or wet farm, I don't know who. Molded, molded. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't get it. Um, yeah, and it's possible that because the project is so new that the city decided to go out there and, and just mow it uh -huh. once um, until more properties are built. But your, your, the property line you own down into the into the water, there is a little portion here uh, that. But, I mean, let, let's look at the, this one because obviously. You don't mind. You see a dash line, right? You see there are two dash lines. Yep. I wonder what the city of the city will do, and where is the property line? So that means my backyard. I need to take care of it. Okay. So the the dash lines are easements. The bold line here uh -huh. is uh -huh. that's that's where. Yep. So your your property line is here. The water comes up to roughly this first dash line. Uh -huh. The next dash line is is there so that when we get a lot of rain, the pond can get as high as this next dash line. Okay. And then it encompasses the entire pond so that if we need to come in and do maintenance, uh -huh. we can access, the city owns this piece right okay. through here where the pipe comes in. So the pipe comes in, the city can come in through here uh -huh. and then drive around the pond if it needed to do some kind of a, a, a maintenance project, which is very, very rare. But um, all of the properties here own into the water. Okay. And if, if the Public Works Department came out and did a mole around this thing, that was probably more of a one-time deal because we, with our improvement project, we planted the grasses to try to stabilize the, the ground. but. Um, the city will not maintain this once there's homes built around the pond. So you are telling me is the first, first uh, line that I have all of that will be my own responsibility to take care of that. That's correct, yep. So if, you're, if you live up here, uh, your responsibility is past the water into the, basically 10 feet past the water. Depending on how much, I mean, if if the water starts to evaporate. But now there is no water; there are only bumps on the grass. My question right. is: if that is the case, is that anyone right now know that area? In here? Yeah. No, so no, no. Oh, in here. We are more like yeah. Is anyone know that area? Typically, the city will not. Um, they might. Who did that? You know, I didn't tell anyone, and I didn't know it, and, but I see the grass has been cut. The, the, so the city might do it because it's so new. Uh -huh. there's, there's not a lot of homes yet. Yeah. So the city probably went out there and just to avoid a nuisance, they cut it down. But once homes are built around it, the city will stop coming out there and, and mowing. Okay. But I, I can't answer that for sure. I don't control the. Yeah, the because department. I don't understand it. I mean, the last seven. I always see the grass in the 16 and the 17 in that dashing line area mm -hmm. because, but not 18 months, not 19. So I don't understand. I mean, oh, yeah. I didn't do anything on that. And who, who came in and do the work? That is my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, and another one, I, I mean, so the water will be, you know, moving to the pond. Right now, it's terrible, terrible. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the ponds generally have to naturally fill up with water. Um, 
and we've been in such a dry cycle that yeah. it hasn't filled up. The only other option there is to use city water to fill the pond, but that costs money, yeah. and, and so the city will not do that. Um, okay, so the water will be filled in by rent only? Yep, yep. Um, generally in the springtime when the snow melts, that also helps, but oh. because it's a new pond and it's a dry season, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that um, Mother Nature is not, not cooperating in that. So. Okay. So it looks like this missing here, sewer, water, straw, and trees that have been complete? Yep, yep. So all of the, everything that you see here on this map, mm -hmm. there's, there's storm sewer lines, water lines, mm -hmm. uh, the street paving, the pond, all of that work was done and then assessed to the, the properties that I showed you in that, that original map. So, yep, you can see here there's water mains, sewer mains, storm sewer, and then the, the gray shaded area is where the streets are. There's some sidewalks, street lighting, the pond, um, and then up in here I think we had some pictures that showed this as well. Just So, but yes, so what you would district uh, 1322 is is all of this work that was done prior to your home being built. Okay. And these are just some example photos that were taken. Yeah. You know, here's they're excavating the, the pond. Yeah. Yep. So all of those costs were then tabulated and spread over the the properties that were in that district. And there are, uh, there's, all of this information is on the website. If, if you do um, have more questions regarding the, how, you know, the costs and so on and so forth, certainly reach out to the engineering department um, after you've had a chance to, to peruse this information. We can certainly keep helping you understand what, what all of this is um, doing, you know, out in your neighborhood, so. Okay. And I Oh. Yes. Yep. So the once the special assessment commission approves, yeah. then it goes to the city commission for approval. Mm -hmm. Once the city commission approves, uh, then there's a process by which it would uh, either a resident can pay the balance up front, or it would go to the county on the on the tax statements. Uh, this is a 25 year period, so your balance there would be spread over 25 years, okay. um, and then it would be included on your annual tax statement as, it, you, right underneath your property tax, there would be a, a line item for special assessment. Okay. That's where that is, and so it's part of your, your tax payment is the annual payment for your special assessments. Okay. Because we also, as a new construction, I realize we have a tax then for the next two years. Sure. Yeah, but those assessments will be included to begin next year or this year? So, yep, these, assuming, once they're approved, they'll be on next year. So they'll be approved this year, but on next year's tax statement. So when you get your tax statement in January, February, it, you'll see District 1322. Well, you'll see a special assessment balance there, yeah. and part of that is because of 1322 and 2250. Okay. Yep. Yeah, if you could. Okay. Yep, yeah, and you could contact the finance department. I mean, there is there is interest tied, so that, I mean, there's an amortization schedule that, for rough purposes, you could divide by 25. But yeah. the banker sitting over there is probably saying that's nah, not a good way to do it. But <laughs> so, if you want to contact the finance department, they could give you a better estimate on what your annual payments will be because they do decline too as the principal balance is paid off. So, yep. Any other questions? No. Okay. <laughs> I hope the pond can be complete because that is the view. That is that is the view, and the view can increase the property value. But right now it's just 
bunch of the bread, bunch of the wheat. <laughs> it's an end of the Well then, John, I had officially opened the public hearing. You probably didn't hear that part. <laughs> and now I'm officially closing the public hearing part of it. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, do you have any other questions on the district that you want Dustin to? Uh, if not, then I'll entertain a motion to approve it. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, Dustin, let's move back up to 1321 now. Uh, well, that's a question for John. Is there any, John, can we approve the rest of them all in a motion, or do we have to have an open close and a motion on each one? What we should do is you could open a public hearing for all of the meeting district. Okay. Ask if anybody has any comment. Close that public hearing. We just want to know if it's for all the district. Close it and then make a motion to approve all. Okay. You're okay with that. Yep, well, I'll let you. you get gentlemen have any questions on any of the districts. Um, I, if, you know, we had a couple of them that we tweaked and capped. Mm -hmm. I was going to we make, we probably we make any changes. Yeah, let's yeah. take a look at those. Good idea. Uh, so with the remaining districts, there were a couple there that um, at the May 24th meeting, the, the commission uh, made some uh, changes decided to cap the assessments. And so the first one I'll start with then is District 1323, the Brooks Harbor 9th District. Okay. And that puts me up here. Okay, so you can see here uh, we applied, so based on the 20, May 24th meeting, a cap of $26,862. So that cap then was applied to all of the properties in the district. I'm going to just get to the map here. Oh, man, I'm at the wrong one here, it looks like. There we go. Okay, so that cap applied. I'm going to go to the previous meeting just so you can have a quick side-by-side -side comparison. the cap I think the rest of them went up about 500 bucks looks like oh 400 yeah so I'm not, I, that looks to be an equitable change mr. Scott what's that so that looks to be an equitable change yep. no. yeah yep. so just to make sure the left side of the screen is uh, the May 24th list. The right side of the screen here is the revised list presented today. So, okay. Mm -hmm. okay yep, looks good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Robin? Or mm -hmm. I don't have any others on this one. Good. Pardon? Robin? I don't have any questions okay. on this one. No. And I'll probably call for. A public hearing on all of them, and then I'll call for a motion on all of them to approve them all. We'll just do it that way. Was there another one that we tweaked? Yep, the other that? one was District 1325. I can certainly get there.
And then there was one other comment, too, that I thought Mr. Shockley had mentioned from the public that was either in an email or a letter. Yeah, we just, uh, for 2250, we just need to include a letter. Okay. They, they actually didn't make any kind of introduction. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure that got addressed. Okay, so the left side of the screen again is the list based on May 24th meeting. And on the right side of the screen is how that cap was applied. So the, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to see at, at first glance here, especially when you've got a lot of red. But um, what I would note is that because of the cap on this district, there was more of a significant change to some of the others. So you can see here, like all the properties on the on the south side yep. were at 24. Now they're at 27, so two and a half thousand dollar increase for them. But um, the properties on the north side, a significant reduction. And so this one was a little bit more of a volatile change, which um, I think. I mean, again, that was that, that was the concern, right? I mean, there was too much volatility, we wanted to bring it closer together. It's just the thing to be aware of there is that some of the lots were significantly called, I don't know, increased by more than 10%. So, Yeah, I think this is a lot more equitable too because you go from 17,000 for low up to 49,000, almost 50,000, and now you've got uh, the spread is a lot less, mm -hmm. 18 for the low and 28 for the high. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the only thing that made it a little, I guess, challenging when in comparison, comparing the policy is that some of these are residential properties and some of them are business office park. Like we said earlier though, we try not to look at the use, but at the same time the policy does play into the use of the property when it comes to residential. But these are local improvements, so I don't, I don't have a concern with it. It's not like the arterial roadway where we are trying to get everyone to an equal playing field, but um, again, it's, it's just, it was, when I applied the cap and I saw some of the residentials go up and the commercials go down. It, it's kind of like the concerns mentioned earlier. It's who uses it more or not. And even if it's an office, I mean, honestly, an office building is probably using it less than a, a family that's living in here that might have five kids. Yep. So we don't get into that world, but I got to point it out. Okay. Well, John, I had a question. We've approved District 2250. Did we approve District um, 1322? Mm -hmm. We did. Yeah, yeah. I made a okay. motion. So then we'll open the public hearing for Districts 1321, 1323, 1325, 1329, 2254, and 4063. And unless Tina wants to talk about them, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> On all of those. And she's not going to let me do any more. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll ask the Commission for a motion to approve districts 1321, 1323, 1325, 1329, 2254, and 4063. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Anything else for the good of the order, gentlemen? Stick around for about 15 minutes. And we'll start signing. Okay, with that, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Yep, thanks, everyone. Thank you.